I'm going to share with you MS fatigue medication pros and cons, my MS story, my experience of taking medication to help improve my situation with MS fatigue. Today I'm going to talk about the side effects, the benefits, and the negative side of things. I'm going to truth bomb something to you. I'm going to talk about also three medications that I have tried and what they are, how I was impacted by them, and what their purpose is. So I'm Jen Tracy. I'm the founder of Women Thriving with MS. I help guide women to move from surviving with MS, to striving with MS, to thriving with MS through my coaching, online programs, free Facebook group, and of course, this YouTube channel, Women Thriving with MS. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that button below and hit the bell to get notifications so you know what's happening. There are side effects that can happen from any medication. If you've been on anything, you know that already. And that is true of these medications that have been used by people living with MS that suffer from fatigue. And I think the stats are that two thirds of all people living with MS suffer from fatigue, but there can be so many variables. And I'm going to talk about that in another video. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to share my full experience of, of what I do, my secrets of how I manage fatigue, because I wake up in the morning with fatigue and I go to bed with fatigue. And one of the things that I tried were different medications to boost up my energy. Because we live with MS, our little wires in our brain <laughs> are attacked by the MS. It means that we have to work so much harder just to do the same things on the energy front. And that can be a challenge. And that's why these medications are prescribed by neurologists. So the reality is that we can do a lot of different things to deal with fatigue. Today, I'm simply talking about my experience with these medications. But first, the truth bomb. So the fact is that pretty much all medications that are prescribed for MS fatigue are not approved by the FDA for that usage. What they're called is off-label. That's the term that's used, off-label. My understanding is, particularly in the US, I'm in Canada, is that those drugs cost more if you're not using those medications for specific purposes. So I'm going to go through each one on the specific purposes as to what they were initially to be used for and how there have been studies around which of the three drugs that I've taken seems to be the most common and the best that is prescribed to help MS fatigue. So let's get started. All right, but before we do, I just want to let you know, if you click down below, you will see that there is a free relaxation guide. And when you're dealing with fatigue, there's stress that comes with that. So just go down below be above the comments, click there on the link, a uh, relaxation guide, it's free. Sign up for that and you'll have some handy dandy tools to help calm your nervous system. In the meanwhile, let me tell you about the three different medications. The first one, number one, is called Ametadine. Now, Ametadine is an antiviral and it is used in some cases for some types of flu as well as for Parkinson's. So very different than MS, but of course, neurological as well. And what they discovered is by giving it to people with MS, they noticed that they had a little bit of a spike in their energy levels. Now, supposedly, there have been many studies done on ametadine and there's no one study that really indicates that it's super effective. That was the first medication I was on and I'll come back to my experience in a couple minutes. The second one is modafinil. Narcolepsy, that's one thing that it's used for. I remember actually I had this math teacher when I was in college. I was taking statistics. Anybody take statistics? And he would get up and teach and then he'd sit down in his chair and he would fall asleep and start snoring. Narcolepsy, if you haven't heard of it, is when people 
fall asleep at the drop of the hat during the daytime. Or I suppose they could, it could happen in the evening time as well. So that's one reason why modafinil was created. The other is for shift workers. Shift workers, people that are working many different shifts and how that really messes up the circadian rhythms of the body. And I've been on modafinil and I'm going to tell you about that. And then lastly, Vivanase, it is used for ADHD. What it does is it creates focus. It slows down the body. It's actually a stimulant that's an amphetamine, but it has a reverse effect on kids that are speeding through at eight at ADHD, it slows them down. Same with drugs like Ritalin and there's, there's a whole slew of them. It's also used for people that are stuck in the habit of binge eating. For some reason, it helps in that way. I'm not an expert at that, so I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. So let me swing back to Ametadine. Ametadine was the first prescription that I took and I just took it in the morning. With any of these medications, they recommend that you take it early in the day Otherwise, you're going to have difficulties sleeping at night. And that is one thing that you do not want to have happen. <laughs> you know, you want to have energy during the day, but you want to be able to sleep at night. So first thing in the morning. And when I took it in the beginning, I did notice a little pop of energy. I took that for about six months and it worked really well. I think the first month it was pretty good. And this is early on in my, in my MS diagnosis, I'd say about two years in. So I took that and, and it felt okay and didn't upset my stomach or anything like that. I didn't have any side effects from it whatsoever. Yet over time, it didn't really do anything. So I went back to my neurologist and I said, well, you know, didn't really work. And she's like, okay, well, let's try this. <laughs> it's like, she's got a whole list of drugs she can give me. And that's modafinil. When I used to go to MS support groups, this seems to be the one that's most common. And it's really interesting because I sometimes have a, a weird effect when I take medication. I have like a, a reverse effect. And so I took modafinil. I was going out in the afternoon to a party and I wanted to have some energy. I knew I was gonna be around a lot of people. And I was like, oh, can I handle going to a party with fatigue? It's gonna be okay. Took the medication, it was my first time. I think that was, you know, a clue. Do not take a medication for the first time when you're going out somewhere. Try it at home, that's my advice to you. So I took this medication and what happened was I started to get this anxiety and that's one of the side effects. So I felt this anxiety and I started to feel really freaked out. And so I decided it was time to leave the party. I think I might've been there for 45 minutes, an hour, but it just really messed up my system. After that, I did not take any more modafinil. I do not need to have additional anxiety in my life. <laughs> That's why I've got this stress release guide that you can download below because we, you know, anxiety is a predominant factor that can show up for women that live with MS and men too. So it's important to have tools in place that you can do, that you have control over, that you don't have to worry about the side effects. So you might be in the camp where modafinil is going to work great for you. You might have weird side effects like me. It might be that it works for a while and then it doesn't see for yourself. And the last one, number three, number three, Vivazinase. I have to say, the first day that I took it, the first day, I felt so high, <laughs> so energized. It was wacky. I was like, oh my goodness. I actually was out for a bike ride. And usually I have fear going down this one hill. I felt very nervous about uh, having an accident. I had, I had had many accidents on my bike and I'd gotten to a point where I was feeling more confident about it, but this one hill made me a little nervous. And so as I was going down that hill, I was like, yeah, <laughs> it was so wild. My confidence, my energy, my uh, unstoppable state of being. And you'd think from that, that I'd be like, I would still be on that medication. 
Now this is probably three years <laughs> after living with MS. It was after I'd gone through the others and that was over a period of time that I took a break in between. But here's the thing is that I was to start at 20 milligrams a day and then after a month move up to 30 and then up and up and up from there. But what I found is that it was hard, even if I took it in the morning, to fall asleep at night. In fact, I was used to having naps every day. And so when I go to lay down for my nap around two o'clock, I couldn't sleep. I was still buzzing, but I also started to feel a very heavy fatigue. So it's like a contradiction. I'm tired, I wanna, I wanna rest, I wanna sleep for a little bit, but there's a buzzing happening, but it's starting to peter out. So it's kind of like a very weird time. I thought, okay, well, I'll just try this for three, four, five days and see how it goes. I knew I couldn't take it too late in the day because I wouldn't be able to sleep at night, but I found that over time, as I took it each day, it became harder and harder for me to sleep at night. And that was disappointing. But I have to say, I was quite out of control on that medication. I was unstoppable. And I think I was like, you know, very speedy. So you know that sleep is so important to MS and fatigue to, to reduce it. So if I'm not sleeping, as I'm building up this drug in my system, then it kind of scratches that off the list. So after that, I decided that I was not going to go on any more medication. I wasn't, I had gone through the, the three key ones, ametidine, modafinil, and vivazinus. And I tried them all out and I thought, you know what, that's it for me. I'm gonna find other ways to manage. So there you go. I'm Jen Tracy, the founder of Women Thriving with MS. Write your comments below about your experience. Of course, I want to hear about them. You matter. And I will see you soon. And if you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe to the video so you can get future videos from me.